What's up, everybody? Happy Monday. <laughs> hope all you're having a great day. Um, I hope all you had a great weekend. Um, getting into this episode. <sighs> I'm sorry, but Sam and Drew. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Because this is... I, I, Listen, even if I'm contradicting what I said before, I'm just going off of what I see. I They're boring. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like I I like I I sat and I watched the whole episode, right? I didn't give a damn about them today. Like they were just on the episode. I just felt like they were there. That's it. They were just there. And I really was not paying really that much attention to their scenes. I wasn't. You know, you you could say I'm messed up for that all you want, but I just was not intrigued by them. They weren't interesting. They weren't fun. They were just there. You know how you just see a character on the show, they're just there, like an ornament on the wall? That's pretty much what the two of them were today. There. That's it. And it, they were just there. I, I guess they were just filler for the episode, I suppose. Because that's all I gathered from it. Like, they just sitting here talking about getting married today. And I'm just thinking to myself, how can you get married today when you're still legally married to somebody else? Isn't that bigotry or whatever they want to call it? Being a bigamist? If you marry somebody knowing that you're still legally married to somebody else? And I'm pretty sure she knew that. Unless for a second it skipped her mind. But even, even still, you know that you're still married to this man. So now, of course, she got to call Jason because she needed a quickie divorce. So her and Drew could get married. They got the marriage license, but they can't get married until 24 hours after the, the license was issued. So they have to wait 24 hours to get married. But they're going to have to wait even longer because they need the divorce. I mean, hell, they could fly down to the Dominican Republic and get that in two seconds. But um, a judge should sign off on it. Um. I really, I, I just honestly hope Jason just signs the papers because you already know Jason going to give her what, what she want. He already has. But Jason is the type of person, I don't blame Jason. He doesn't fight for people. Whenever he's in a relationship, when Elizabeth wanted to walk out, he didn't fight for her. Sam wanted to walk out, he didn't fight for her. He didn't fight for none of his relationships. That's the kind of person that he is. He does not do all of that. Like He's not like other people on the show that fight for their marriage and this, that, and the third. If you want to walk out, he will gladly let you walk out. Maybe not gladly, but he will let you walk out. You know what I'm saying? I'm the same type of person. If somebody want to walk out of my life, I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to use words. I'm not going to be like, oh, give me another chance. Nope. You want to willingly leave? Get out point blank that's just how i am you want to go go i'm not you ain't shackled here i don't have you handcuffed that's what it is you know that's just what it is you want to go a reva dirty but um yeah i didn't care for these scenes moving on from that finn i didn't understand why finn was in such a rush to tell jordan that he's the one who stabbed Cassandra in the chest with the needle. I didn't understand why he and Anna tried to cover it up or cover for him or whatever. What was the point? Even if Finn did stab her with the needle, it was clear self-defense. He would never be charged. There's no way the DA would charge him. For what? He's the victim. Anna's the victim. Suffice it to say, Valentine's a victim too. However you want to look at it, but he's a victim too. So they're all victims. So it was self-defense. Like, first of all, this woman broke into somebody's home, had her henchman kidnap the woman. Then she spewed some drug into Finn's system. It was clear self-defense. So I didn't see the point in all of this. But according to Jordan, Eric which was Cassandra's henchman, is the one who claims that he stabbed her in the chest with the needle and dragged her into the alley. So what happened when Finn attacked her? Because remember, Finn attacked her when she threatened Anna. 
And then after that scene, we saw her in the foyer of Anna's house with the needle in her. So what happened during that time? Because we still don't know what happened during that time frame. We don't know. I just feel like this whole thing is fishy to me. So the henchman confessed to all of this. Stabbing her in the chest. Putting her body in an alley. I, I don't know. I, this whole thing don't sit well with me. I, I feel like it's too open and shut. Case closed. That's too open and shut. I just feel like there's more to the story that we're not knowing. That we, we don't know anything about. That's just, I don't know. It's the detective in me. It's my instincts coming out. Maybe I could be wrong, but so, the eye contact that everybody was making with each other, like Jordan and Dante, like when they were talking about the case, it just felt like Jordan feels like maybe there's more to this too. I don't know. It's their whole interaction. Like when she, it's the way that they looked at each other and stuff, not just their words, but the way they looked at each other and the way her facial expressions were. It just seems off to me. It's something about this case that's fishy. Something about his statement that's fishy. I don't trust it. Something is going on, and I have a feeling it's, I don't know, but something is going on here. It's it, it kept nagging me the entire time I watched this episode. It just kept nagging at me. It's like that little voice. It's more. It's more. It's more. Like, I just feel like there's something freaking more. Something going on. Something is going on. Yo, I swear, this right here, I don't know if y'all can see this, but this Dermacil, best skincare lotion you get. I love this. Especially during winter. I love it. I love it. Dermacil is like the best skincare lotion. I love it. I use this stuff like every day. So, um, anyway. Yeah, so I, I feel like there's something fishy going on. Moving on from that, um, I get where Maxie's coming from, you know, as far as Faison being her baby's grandfather. I get it, but at the end of the day, she needs to calm down a little bit because Faison, yeah, he's psycho, but it's not genetics that can be passed down to the grandchild. It's not something that can be passed down Faison is who he is because that's what he chose. It's not really DNA that makes him the way he is. I feel like he's just that way because that's the way he wants to be. Nathan apparently is his son and Nathan does not act anything like Faison. He hasn't shown any type of character trait to Faison. So I can understand her concern about Faison being the grandfather because what if he tries to come to town and take the baby and you know what I'm saying? I would be concerned as well. You know, you got a deranged lunatic as a grandfather for your child. Yeah, I would be cautious as well. I would, I don't care how much it would cost me. I will have a whole fleet of security guards until he's caught. That's just how it is. I wouldn't trust it. And the only reason Lulu was even speaking with Maxie, yeah, they're friends, but Lulu has an ulterior motive here. Don't get me wrong. They're best friends, but she has a motive. And her motive became quite clear today. When she overheard Dante and Nathan talking, and when Dante left, she wants to partner up with Nathan to find Faison. Here's here here's the thing. I like that Lulu has this new investigative journalism job, and I like that her inner Spencer is coming out of her. And she does like danger, I get it, but you're playing in a field that you never played in before. This is not the little leagues. This is the big leagues. You're playing with some big boys here. Faison is nothing to play with. Like I said, investigative journalists don't carry guns. And I don't even know if she even has a gun permit. But you might want to get one. Because if you're going to go looking for people like Faison, you better be packing. That's all I'm saying. Because like I said before, she's a Spencer, Luke's daughter. Faison will have no issue killing her. He doesn't like Luke. He hates Luke. So it would be a notch in his belt to kill Luke's child. Especially Luke's only daughter. Of course he would. He wouldn't hesitate. That's why I thought it was crazy from the beginning that she wanted to find Faison for some type of interview or whatever. I said, are you nuts? You're trying to find a deranged killer, a psycho who has a history with your father, not a nice history, and he would kill you without hesitation. 
and this is the type of person that you're looking for without any type of backup, without any type of gun, are you insane? Like, Lulu just makes me question her sanity sometimes. Because I can understand you looking for this guy, but you would think that you would be smarter about it. Get a gun, maybe. You know, I'm glad that she partnering up with Nathan. At least Nathan can protect her. But, you know, her going at it alone, I didn't like that. Because it's too risky. You're dealing with a psycho that you've never dealt with before to this magnitude. I mean, Lulu has been in her fair share of danger, but never to this magnitude with somebody like Faison. You know what I'm saying? Like, never. I mean, yeah, she's went up against people like Helena Cassidyne before, but, you know, Helena is a bit more different than Faison. You know, Helena has her moments, but she's not a complete psycho. Yeah, Helena would kill you without hesitation, but luckily for her, she is a Spencer, and Helena actually is quite fond of Luke, even though she still holds him responsible for what happened to her husband and her kids, but she's still quite fond of him nonetheless, so she wouldn't slit Lulu's throat on sight, only if tempted, but, you know, Helena was more grounded than Faison. Faison's a loose cannon. There's no controlling him. He has no moral compass. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's deranged to the 10th power, you know? But, like I said, I like it because it's a little interesting, but I just feel like Lulu needs to be more cautious. You have two children. You need to scale back a little bit. Um, Sonny and Jason still run around trying to figure out who P.K. Sinclair is or who Sinclair is, I guess, Faison's illegitimate child. So they went to Anna, of course, and Anna told them that if he did have another son, the mother would have to be some woman, I think, named Denise or whoever. Um, I guess she was Faison's little henchwoman back in the day. But apparently she died years ago, which pretty much means there's a possibility that she's still alive. Because, you know, whenever they say a character died 20, 30 years ago, there's a big chance that that person did not die. Um, Sonny got the vibe from Anna that she was lying. Not lying, but she was holding him back information. I kind of got that vibe from her, too. Like, she definitely not telling him something. And I want to know what that something is. Like, because you're obviously not saying something. Um, Maxie basically barged into Sonny's office demanding that he keep quiet about Nathan being Faison's son, which I can understand. Most of the town pretty much already knows by now, but she just don't want word getting back to Faison, you know, because the less people you tell, the more, you know, concealed the secret can be, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, Sonny told her, like, just chill out. He not, you know, she really worried about Carly knowing. She really don't want Carly to know, which is understandable because Carly can't hold water. Um. So anyway, Jocelyn. Jocelyn is her mother's child. That's all I can say. The way she acted with uh, Oscar today, it was ridiculous. Like, I get it. She wanted him to ask her to the ball. I get it. But why do women do that stuff? She, what she did today made me realize what a lot of other women in real life do. You know how y'all women, y'all for y'all women out there, y'all get mad at us, us men, and we don't even know what you're mad about. And then when we ask you, you tell us to get away from you, get out. You don't even want to tell us what we did. You know what I'm saying? That's what frustrates me with women because y'all could do something. Y'all get mad. We don't even know what the hell you mad about. We're not mind readers. We're not. We're not mind readers. You know. Since the beginning of time, men have never understood women. And to this day, I still don't get women. Because, like, y'all could get mad. We don't know what you're mad about. And when we throw up our hands and just say, forget it, you want to have an attitude, they have an attitude. Then y'all get even more mad because you think we don't care. <coughs> this damn phone. But then y'all think we don't care. But I'm like, we do care. If we didn't care, we wouldn't ask you what was the problem. What are you mad about? You know what I mean? I'm not a mind reader. Some of y'all women get on my damn nerves. Because y'all get mad at the drop of a dime. And we don't even know what y'all mad about. And you refuse to tell us what you mad about. So I just be telling chicks, like, forget it. You want to have an attitude? You want to act like a child? Act like a child. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm asking you 
What are you mad about? Be an adult and tell me what you're mad about so we can fix it. But by you not telling me, I just feel like it's childish. And the way Jocelyn acted with Oscar just reminded me of so many women who act like that. I was like, I can't stand it. God, that's a turn off for me. Like, I hate when women do that. Like, I'm, I'm trying to be in a mature relationship. If you can't tell me what I did and you're going to pout about it all day and I don't even know what you're mad about, I'm done. <laughs> hey, I'm walking out. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got to worry about me. You know what I mean? I just find it stupid. Um, But, you know, Oscar, he was messing around with her. He he intended to ask her, but he was nervous because, you know, Oscar is a shy kid. He was a little nervous about asking her, you know, but he asked her. She accepted. Um, All's well and well. Carly was her usual nosy self. And it was a conversation that Oscar and Jocelyn had where Jocelyn said the night of the ball, she was going to blow his mind. Even Carly looked like she got a little nervous when she heard that statement. And I kind of know what she's thinking. She's thinking that she talking about sex. You know, that's where your mind go when you hear your child, you know, your teenager going on a date with their boyfriend or their girlfriend. They talking and it sounds sexual in a way or your mind goes to that. I, my mind would go. I started thinking that, too. I said, what they going to do? Get a hotel room? Can't be the Metro Court because obviously her mother co-owns it and all the employees know her. Um, if I was Carly, I'd be thinking that too, but you know how Carly do. She rushed to judgment all the time. Don't even know what's going on. You know, Carly, she likes to meddle in everybody's business. That's what she does best. Um, but anyway, this episode was pretty decent. Hit the comment section and let me know what y'all thought about it. And, uh, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.